Hey folks, welcome back to Containers 101 with .NET. I'm Chet Husk. Let's take a look at uh, how we can use the .NET tooling to debug and run the application that we worked with last time. As a refresher, we were in a brand new .NET new web application, and we'd published it as a container. That looked a lot like this. So the SDK had built our container for us, we would had run it, and we had seen that it worked. And that's great for sort of one-shot scenarios, but that's not how code works. You're going to be making changes to your application. You're going to be testing it. And it doesn't really make sense to have to come back to the command line to build this all the time. So let's take a look at what some of the tooling that we have available can do to help us with that problem. Here I've got Visual Studio Code. So this is connected to my um, WSL Ubuntu instance. You can see that up here at the top. So we're effectively running on Linux here, but all of this tooling will still work. I know that I want to check out how this thing is actually going to work in the container. And so what I can do to do that is actually just press F5. As long as you have the Docker extension for VS Code installed, it has deep knowledge of .NET applications, and it has actually built the container, started it running, and hooked up debugging tools for us so that we can hit the breakpoint that I had set here. That was one button press, and the tooling did all of that for us. If we want to, we can actually go to the Docker tab on the left here, and we can see that the container web app container is running. This is super cool. That was absolutely trivial to do. And actually, if we go to this right here and open in browser, we can see that, well, the app isn't actually running now because we're still in the startup. But if I wait here, that's what we, I was hoping for. The tooling started and our inner breakpoint hit. We can see that we've breakpointed on Hello World here. And if I hit F5 again and come back to the browser, we can see that exact same behavior that we saw before. And just to prove that this isn't a fluke, I'm going to change this to the whole world and just really expand the scope of our greeting here and run this one more time. So just like before, you can see the tooling calling a very similar publish command to what we did on the command line before starting the application. So let's skip past these breakpoints again. And boom, we've hit that same spot again with zero effort. I love this. This makes it so easy to iterate on an application and test it in something production-like. .NET is cross-platform and, and very good at that these days. Um, but when you're developing on Windows sometimes, it can really help um, sort of simulate what's going on in production to be able to actually run your app in a container. So tooling like this really helps bring that, uh, that bar down. So if the tooling can help us uh, run, that's super great. But this was a very straightforward container. We're not doing anything special here. How do we customize this container? What are the kinds of things we can do with it? Well, the tooling is pretty, uh, pretty flexible in this regard. So far, we've just been publishing containers for an application that is deployed as framework dependent. And as a result, if we go to Docker and we look at that container image, we can see it's quite large. It's 300 and some odd megabytes expanded on the disk. It's smaller compressed, um, but that's still quite large. And that's because we're including the whole runtime. We're including ASP.NET Core. The .NET SDK tooling can actually help you a lot here. If you go to your project file and you make a couple small changes, like opting in to trimming like this, and then republish, we can see, you got to keep your slashes in there, we can see a few dramatic changes to the container that we're going to get generated here. First thing that we see, the tooling is optimizing the assembly for size and then building with a slightly different base image. Whereas before, we were building with the ASP.NET base image. 
Now we're building with the runtime depths image because when you trim, you bundle the runtime with your application. Let's take a look at what impact that has had on the container overall. So here is the latest container that we just built. We went from 320 megs to 217 all told. That is a pretty massive change. So most of that is coming from the base Ubuntu image that we're building on, and then the .NET uh, dependencies that we have, like OpenSSL and um, ICU and the time zone data. These are things that enable things like localization. Most applications need those, so I think this is a pretty fine balance to, to have. The overall point I'd like to make here, though, is that the SDK tooling knows about your project and can help you make the right decisions. What is the most efficient base image? What is the correct set of tags to use? And it does that using the same knobs that you are already setting to get the effect in the first place. If you want trimming, we're going to give you the smallest and most secure base image you possibly could want. From there, you can do a few additional things, too. Um, you can choose a different base image that has an even smaller OS. Um, we have this feature called Container Family that when you set it to something like Jammy Chiseled to use some of the minimal operating system uh, base images that we have available, and if we run this one more time, we'll see yet another dramatic change in size. So the whole story here is the .NET SDK will help you make the most efficient images that you can. And you've got options to control what happens all along the way. There's our jammy chiseled base image. And let's take a look. Boom, 56 megs. Let's look at why that is. It's because we are using a very, very minimal install of Ubuntu with no additional packages. Super cool stuff, and the SDK has got you covered all the way. So we saw that VS Code could run that, uh, uh, that Docker container, but what if we can't use the .NET SDK to build our image? And there are reasons for that. What if we need a special package from the Ubuntu package repositories that we need to run apt update to use. Well, in that case, we can use some of the existing tooling in VS Code to actually create a Docker file for us to work off of. So we're going to choose to generate the Docker files for our project. We're going to tell it that we are an ASP.NET Core application and that we would like to target Linux. And then it is actually just going to scaffold out perfectly workable and usable base images. These are great. These are a great place to start working from. So because we're an ASP.NET application and because we're targeting .NET 8, that was scaffolded for us. You uh, have here what's called a multi-stage container, which is where the build happens in a .NET SDK container. And then your build output is copied into what's called a published container, which is a minimal no extra dependencies container. This is similar to what the .NET SDK does, but with more steps in the way. The upside to using this is that you can add any run commands you need to build or to uh, acquire additional dependencies that you need. So this is the, the low level full control mode. So uh, you can also use the Docker tooling to build in this way as well when you're in VS Code. It works just as easily. Same thing, just F5 and follow the prompts. So that's VS Code, but I know that a lot of folks are still very comfortable in VS. And have no fear, we've got your back there too. This is the same kind of project. It's a web app that was created with .NET New Web that we've loaded up into Visual Studio. If you want to run this, you can just go to right-click Add Docker Support and have the same kind of choice that uh, we had in VS Code. So if we choose the container build type of the .NET SDK, and then we debug our container Docker file mode, Visual Studio will build the application as well, or it would if there weren't build errors. Oh, I chose the wrong mode. That, that would help. So let's choose the .NET SDK mode and try again. So now we can see it 
building the application, and it's also going to call that same publish command to create the container, and then launch the app. We can see we're in debugging mode, and in just a second, we'll hit our breakpoint. Just like in VS Code, the experience works seamlessly. And also, just like in VS Code, if you need to eject, if you need the raw control that Docker files provide, the tooling's got your back there too. You can just choose Docker file, and you will get uh, a very similar base image as we saw in VS Code. Right? So no matter which way you go, either depending on the .NET SDK or using full Docker files, the tooling's got your back for the run and debug inner loop. So at this point, we've built our application and customized it a bunch of different ways, and now we're ready to deploy it. Check out the next video in the series where we deep dive into how the tooling can help you do that too. See you next time, and thanks for watching.